Hi everyone, today is September 5th, 2020. This is the Duel Assessment, your podcast for Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. My name is Green Ranger. This week we got a huge week. We wrapped up the KCGT. So we have the decks of the top four players. Um, new box, that's probably the main thing this week. The new mini box called Arena of Sanctuary. The names of the boxes are kind of... I'll get into it, but it's kind of uh, whatever. Uh, what else do we have? Igami is here this week. We actually got to keep and acquire the Legendary Duelist, but we're not going to talk about Igami this week. Lava Golem nerf, future effect damage nerf. We'll talk about that. And Evolved Hassleberry. Oh yeah, Doug Dimon Duel is casual deck of the week. Not really casual, it's decent. Legend deck, DD, Double D, Light Sworn. So check out Doug's casual deck of the week later. So yeah, this is the Dual Assessment. Subscribe anywhere you get your podcast. Search the Dual Assessment. This is the longest running uh, Dual Links podcast. No gimmicks here. Just straight Dual Links talk. So, this week in Dual World. So I haven't had much time to do anything. Um... Very limited time on social media, so sorry if I'm gone, but I am making the most time that I have with ranked duels, and I bought into the box for what I needed, which was Karma Cut, and I got enough pieces to play Kara Curries, actually, so I'm getting ready to do that, but given the situation of everyone getting Karma Cut, I figured it would be best to go right in with a deck that can counter a meta with a lot of um, karma cuts and traps. So I was thinking of Akiza's Synchro Toolbox deck. Level 6, uh, Archfiend's Call, and um, an Asuria Barkeon. So both are decent cards to counter the meta. And also throw in your um, Forbidden Lances and some karma cuts of my own. Some other text, which I'll keep a secret for now. And I almost got to Legend 5 last night if it weren't for me disconnecting. Uh, disconnecting is happening a ton. I don't believe my internet does that on its own, but it's possible it's my internet. But, um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a game off Legend 5, so it's possible I can hit King of Games soon. Uh, winning most of my games, I'm under 40 wins right now, so I'm in the 30s. Pretty good pace. And once I do hit King of Games, I'm going to go with Car Curry just for fun. Uh, the Witchcrafters. I, don't, I haven't seen a ton of Witchcrafters myself. It's possible they're really weak against Karma Cut as well. So the Witchcrafters may have to run things like Spellbook of... Um, what's it called? Spellbook card, uh, Forbidden Lands themselves, things like that. So, you know, I hit King of Games with um, the Lollies, three straight months so i guess going back to the synchro toolbox seeing what i could do with that so this week in esports we have the kcgt main tournament results and looking at the decks it's i misinterpreted the rules because they could kind of use the set limit two limit three cards across the decks but they can't use the same ones um or they're or better yet the way to say it is they can use multiple copies of those cards, but they don't have to add up, if that makes any sense. You can't use two, like, content training currents in two decks, if that makes any sense. Like, two in each, like, you can use one in each deck, but not two. So there's three decks each for each player. First place, Zade King, he won the KCGT. Uh, level duplication, Shirinui, this is a 21 card deck. Half of it is trap cards, which is what you would expect with the deck. A lot of um, Venus Chains in the deck. There's well, one Floodgate, two Paleozoic Canadia format. I'm not really sure what the justification is that for there, but I guess the extra bodies do help with the Synchro Summoning. Bad Aim in the deck. Bad Aim's probably become one of the best trap cards that no one really talks about. And the number of Shirinui cards in this deck, there's only six. Two Solitaires, two Squires, two Spectral Swords. So the core of the deck is getting smaller and smaller, and there's more room for other cards. 
True Invoke Neos. This one has the most balance, so there's just like 10 monsters, 5 spells, 8 traps. So when you have this type of balance, it works for Ultimate Providence um, to be in the deck so you can negate whatever you want. Mostly the monsters, the volcanic shells um, are kind of useless. You toss them into the GY, and Ultimate Providence is good. It's best used to negate a monster effect and destroy that. There's Transmigration Prophecy. And then Bring It Masked Heroes. This is a straight-up aggro Masked Hero deck. Not much to say about it. Second place, KW Row, Shadow Game, Ritual Beast. Ritual Beast is going the direction of all the good trap cards. Um, so two Phoenix Chain, three Floodgate, two Wolf D. Uh, no Lava Golems. Switcheroo Invoked Neos, again, with the uh, three copies of Ultimate Providence. Of discard for benefit cards. Given volcanic shell is kind of useless. And alternative evolution blue eyes. Um looks like they're playing around with some of the like there's only room for like two trap cards here. A lot of the uh white stone of ancients and things like that, the sage with eyes of blue, tuners, a lot of uh, not much room for uh innovation in this deck. So they got some of the leftovers from the uh invoke deck. Up four, Surakokun, Power of the Dark, Dark Magician. No balance needed. This this deck qualifies for balance. There's six of each type of card, but doing it old school, Power of the Dark. I like it. Peak Performance, Black Wings, Control Build here. So they've got the Ancient Fairy Dragon, Ancient Pixie Dragon, Necro Valley thing going on here. Blackbird Close, and Infernity. Inferno, Infernity. This is the spiciest deck of the top four. Um, got the Karibo package, so you got the Winged Karibos and the Flutes. But this deck is notable for running uh, Trap Stun, which uh, it's kind of like having another Hey Trunade in the deck. So you got two Hey Trunades and two Trap Stuns. Top four, GAOV. Switcheroo Invoked Neos, a fat 24 card deck. Um, like the other ones that uh, like the other invoked Neos decks, there's three copy, copies of Ultimate Providence. Alternative Evolution Blue Eyes, 26 cards, fat deck, all the good trap cards here. And Show of Nightmares Witchcraft, there's 26 cards, not 30. Very unconventional card. There is some Light Sworn component, but there's no Solar Recharge, so it can't really count as a Light Sworn Witchcrafter deck. Two Raidens, no. Uh, Minerva's, no uh, Lila's, so this is a very uh, bizarre composition of the deck. And in the Witchcrafters themselves, there's no Edel. So there's some missing pieces here. Uh, in terms of the back row control, two Night Beams, two Storm. So this is a good take on the deck as well. And as such, with these events that Konami runs... There wasn't much fa fanfare, unfortunately. We we didn't hear much about it. Um, outs if Duelings Meta wasn't pumping it up with, or uh, Duelings Entertainment, if they weren't doing interviews with them, talking to them, showing these deck lists, I'm not sure what Konami would have done besides uh, broadcasting it. So I definitely would like more promotion on that part, but things are as they go. So let's look at some of the other tournaments this week. Duelings Meta Weekly 140. First place, Chinos TCG, Show of Nightmares, Lightsworn, Witchcrafter. This deck is notable for running an obscure spell, Shuffle Reborn. Um, mostly to set up a synchro play, so you recycle, I mean, you resurrect a tuner, and um, special summon it, no effects, so you think of using it as a, just a tuner, so Minerva or Raiden can work for that regard. Otherwise, this is a regular 30 card uh, Lightsworn uh, Witchcrafter deck. At the Solar Recharge, so that's why it counts as Light Sworn. Second place, Bellator, Sorcery Conduit, Invoked Element Saber. Very typical deck for this ilk. Uh, notably, it doesn't run a third field spell, so the third field spell may be on the way out. We don't know. Up four, Brandon MGK, Restart Card Curry. So it seems like the new box has some value outside of Karma Cut, and that's Card Curry. The same way you play it as always. 
Hey, True Nade is pretty much a core card for Car Curry. You have that OTK potential. Uh, two Cosmic Cyclones to kind of hedge. Uh, the back row removal for that OTK. And most decks do run level augmentation, but Restart's a pretty popular deck as well. So this deck, three Kunamzan, three Nanishi, three Inasachi, one Nisamu, those Cosmic Cyclones, and Heytrunades, two Cash Cache, two Cash In, and two Karma Cuts. And top four, Nico FN, Switcheroo, Invoked, Neos. Very typical deck. Not going to get into it, but you got the Ultimate Province, you got the Karma Cut, you got the Raigeki Break. Last tournament I'll talk about is the Dual Pro Series 1. First place, Revolver, Level, Augmentation, Shiranui. So, um, it's interesting. There's This deck is known for card advantage. There's no Karakuri Anatomy. I think the last tournament there wasn't any either so it's interesting that they're getting away without doing that but this deck is a bit of a harder way to play it two kunamzan three nanishi three inasachi one nisamu two forbidden lance one herald of the abyss two hey true nades one cash cache one gold dust two cash in and two karma cuts Ridden Lance is probably the most important counter in the meta and right now. It's good to use it in your deck when you're climbing. Uh, you got your removals. Hey, True Nate, of course. Herald of the Abyss. And Gold Dust is kind of like the big brain card um, that they have. And it's not necessary, but big brain card. Second place, Sea Flow. Destiny Draw Invoked Element Saber. Very typical deck. But did you use a lot of the older trap cards? Three Floodgates, two Paleozo Canadias, one on Ending Nightmare, two Wall of D, one Fusion Reserve. So not a, no Karma Cuts or anything like that here. I guess that's the difference between Invoked, uh, Element Saber versus Neos. Neos uses the Graveyard a lot better. Up four, Zuyo, 1403. See you later, Ritual Beasts. Um, a different diversion here. We saw... Uh, KW Row run the trap version. This one has no traps at all. Uh, in fact, it's just a lot of tech cards. There's two Lancia, one Sphere, two Cosmic, one Herald of the Abyss as removal, I guess, and then the quick play spells. There's no, just a lot of monster consistency. So they are going in a different direction again. And top four Beastie Mario Restart Karakuri. This one does run Karakuri Anatomy. This is a more expensive version of the deck because they bought through the mini box three times. They run three cash ins and three kunams on. So you could you could go away, get away with just two of those cards and fit in some other pieces. But this one has um, better card draw, I assume, with the anatomy. And they just, you know, two cash uh, caches as well. So um, not a lot of cards here. The tier list did not change, so I won't talk about it. Uh, let's see. Let's talk about Lava Golem. So, starting on September 29th with the arrival of the new Zexal world, Lava Golem will be nerfed. Uh, the, the Herald of Cancer, the removal for super sticky monsters. I guess that's the fair way to, to consider Lava Golem. You could actually remove... Uh, invoked Coxitis, other cards like that with Lava Golem, but they cited that it just dealt too much effect damage. So people always thought about putting it on a limit list and things like that, but I guess this is the more effective way. But in a way, you're changing the card from what it always was since it was invented. Um, you know, cards from the anime do get changed when they become a TCG card, I guess. Um, sometimes the storyline has to go a certain way. Lava Golem burning 1,000 was okay when you ran 8,000 life points um, in your game, but now you're in 4,000 and you're burning 1,000. It became it became really annoying to see Lava Golem. It was a card that everyone, you know, most people did hate. Um... It made people play conservative. And that may have been the issue, making people play conservative. 
you, you never wanted to push two monsters onto the board. But we are playing speed duels, so they always have to keep that in mind. So with the nerf to Weevil's Parasite deck, I mean Parasite Infestation skill, Restructor Revolution, now Lava Golem. It seems like all the old burn strategies are gone. And it's not gone gone. You could still use like you know, Shadow Game or Chain Reaction, anything like that. But Lava Golem burning 500 it just isn't the same. Now, the decks that do need it, they probably will still run it. But it, it's a big effect. Any burn stall deck is going to get hit. Any Roid deck... Odeon Trap, Stall decks, Ritual Beast, Stromberg decks, they all ran Lava Golem. So, it's going to lead to more aggressive boards, I'm thinking. Um, just a general reduction of Stall and Burn decks. Even though they'll still run Lava Golem, because there's nothing like it in terms of removal. The damage is less, but they might just pack in more effect damage instead. So, I think... Um, Lava Golem isn't dead, but the amount of decks that rely on it will go down significantly. Now, that's the only... I want to make this clear. That's the only card we have right now that is getting changed from effect damage. Ultimate Conductor Tyranno... Oh, I just, I just botched that one. Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. Any other... Effect damage card is not changing right now. So of the cards we have right now, only Lava Golem is changing. Now when they said Zexal World is coming, any cards that are arriving then will also have their damage effect damage reduced by half. So just Lava Golem now and more later. I can't tell you what it is, what's coming later. Um... I'm not going to pretend to know because people have a lot of opinions on XDs and I don't know what I'm talking about. So I'll have to wait and see. You know, I'm, I'm assuming any card you get, like some XDs monster, that will do effect damage. They were just too, they were too effective at it. They were, they were just going to be burn machines. I think that's what, that's what this was all for. So. Uh, I'm happy with it. I'm not. It's kind of like ignorance is bliss. I'm not going to know what the original card burned for. So, you know, um, I'm not going to say this card was nerfed significantly. But there will be a problem when I'm looking, doing some research on the card, and it doesn't match. So I'm actually have to go on the Duel Links pages instead of the TCG pages because the cards will be completely. They'll be they'll be cut in half. The main event this week is the uh, third time we're getting Evolved Hassleberry. It's not really the raid duel format. There was like a raid duel format where we were fighting uh, Black Tyranno, I believe. But anyways, I think this might be the last part because it seems like we're getting all the pieces we need to play uh, Evil so evil to uh, Tiles and Evil Sores. There's only two cards here. I'll go over them quickly. Evo Diversity... Uh, normal spell, add one evil tile or evil sore monster from your deck to your hand. You can only activate one per turn. This is the unsexy uh, archetype tutor spell that you see in almost every archetype. And you're going to need to play the card because it sets up your plays. There's not much more to say about it. It sets up your plays. And it's evil tile and evil sore. I'm not sure which ones are important or not, but it lets you use both. Uh, this is a useful card. That's all I can say about it. Other new card is Evil Tile Legasuko. Level 3 Fire Reptile. 1200-500. When this is normal summoned, you can send one Evil Sore for, uh, from your deck to your graveyard. It's a monster. When this card is flipped face up, you can special summon one Evil Tile monster from your deck. This is a very useful card as well. Um, it does some deck disposal, so you can... Normal summon it to send one card to the graveyard, or you could set it and let you special summon an evil tile monster. So I guess you could do both when you flip summon, because you're flipping it and normal summoning it, so you could do both things there. And the flip effect 
makes me think that they can have some kind of XZ's component to it. So you could just get another level 3 evil tile monster, and then you can have a rank 3 XZ summon there. So it's possible they have some leeway uh, into being an early archetype for XZ's. So I think that's the main use of Lagasuko. I think uh, there's some other card that helps them come out of the graveyard. I assume we've got we've gotten so many of these cards, and I think we have all the pieces to do something with them in XZ. So I'm not exactly sure, but it seems that we have enough cards. All right, let's get to new mini box Arena of Sanctuary. I gotta say, these names are just like, they're just throwing, they're just recycling from the same 10 words over and over again, and it's kind of like, very dull names, but this is probably the last release until uh, Zexal World, and it might be for a bit, because they released this box, and even when Zexal World hits, I'm not sure if they're going to release a box at the same time. The selection box might come back, though. The selection box might be back for the Kaiba Cup, I heard. But this is these are the last new cards. I'm not sure if they're doing a new selection box, but it could be the old selection box as well. The URs and SRs are the same here. We'll discuss those cards. There's a lot of good R cards here, too. Maybe I'll discuss them some other day, but... I mean, again, I've, I haven't had the time to go over these cards, but I have been beat by some of them, so some of them do stand out to me. First card is Trishula, the Dragon of Icy Imprisonment. Level 9, Dragon, 3 monsters with different names, 2700, 2000, must be fusion summoned using monsters in your hand or field or special summoned by contact fusion. By cards you control, if this was special summoned using monsters that were originally dragons, you can reveal and banish three cards, one from your deck, one from your opponent's deck, one from the top of your opponent's deck, and one from the extra deck. You can use this effect once per turn. So this is an interesting card. Uh, you could do it the polymerization way with hand or field. No graveyard or deck involvement here. Or you could use the contact fusion method with a full board of monsters. 2,700 attacks are not much at all, but it is three monsters with different names. So it could be fitted into pretty much any deck. Um, any deck can run this with that contact fusion. The problem is they have to be dragons, or else there's no reason to, to sacrifice three for 2,700 fusion with no effect. So, so as long as they're dragons... You can use that effect to uh, get some removal off. So one card from the extra deck, one from their deck, and one from yours. So you get to populate your graveyard. You get to remove something from theirs and even hit something from the extra deck, which is pretty unique. That's something that hasn't been done before. Overall, this is just a fun card. Even Blue Eyes can't really this card because they don't want to do that contact fusion to banish their own cards i don't i don't think they want to do that because their pieces their synchro plays recycle from the graveyard or other spells like that so this is more of a fun card for some multi-purpose dragon strategy but otherwise not too useful Valkyrie, Brynhilde, level 7, Fairy, 1800, 2000, unaffected by your opponent's spell effects, gains 500 attack for each monster your opponent controls. When an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can have this card lose exactly 1000 defense. If you do, your Valkyrie monsters cannot be destroyed by battle this turn. This is one of the boss monsters of the Valkyries. You'll want to cheat it out. Uh, whole Full board battle protection ability costs nothing, so she's in attack, not defense. So you're losing a thousand defense. That's not very. That doesn't really change anything. And she's not affected by enemy spell effects, so Econ can't flip her over. It's not like people run Windstorm of Etiqua or Curse of Anubis nowadays. So it's not going to be anything. And even if she loses the defense, everyone's protected by destruction. So pretty good. Um, 
Yeah, they can't be destroyed by battle, so it would need something like Black Rose Dragon or something, some kind of effect to destroy them all, but they're all on the board. They're going to be protected by this card. Free protection is really good. And the last UR is Karakuri Bonzi Model 9763 Kunamzan, level 5 machine, 2,500. Must attack if able. If it's targeted for an attack, change the battle position of this card. If this is in your hand, you can target one Karakuri you control. Change its battle position. If you do, special summon this as a tuner. And you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck for the turn except for Earth Machines. You can use this effect once per turn. Very good card. So, the stats are ugly for one tribute. But the goal is not to tribute this at all. And you want to cheat it out of the hand to turn it into a level 5 tuner. So it works really well with the merchant. So the merchant's level 2. You play the merchant. You tutor Kunamzan. And then you can change the position of that card. Special summon this. Maybe you have anatomy on the board. So you get a counter on that. A gear counter on that. So you get into your level 7 play with Burei right away. So very good. Uh, it's pretty much like a one card synchro summon because you just need the merchant and you're gonna have three merchants so um the limitation is just running earth machine monsters but car curries are kind of all you need are the car curry monsters um so that works really well also this is a level five so you could use the Nichi as a level three tuner this is not a tuner so then you can make a level 8 synchro play into Burido too. So this is the piece that they were missing. I think they're creeping up in the competitive scene partially because of this card. So the build, it's being 5 stars, just works really well with the 7 and 8 synchro plays. And yeah, really fast synchro summoning is the is the appeal of this card. And to the SRs. Exploder, Dragon Wing, level 7, Dark Dragon Synchro, 1 tuner and 1 or more non-tuner dragons, 2400, 1600. At the start of the damage step, if this card battles a monster, you can destroy that monster. If you do inflict damage to your opponent equal to the attack of the destroyed max the monster had on the field, this card's attack must be greater than or equal to that monster to activate and resolve this effect. It's a very good ability. You can affect destroy the monster and then inflict burn damage on their attack. Now the big problem, there, there's a f few big problems with this card. The monster must have less or equal to attack. So 2400 or less typically, you could kind of buff this card to make it hit over 3000 and make them burn 3000. So that would be pretty good. It requires the non-tuner to be a dragon, so that's... That's going to limit this to dragon decks similar to how Trishula requires dragons. So the best way to do this is probably with Brionic. So you use Brionic as a level 6. You bounce something back and then you get like a glow up bloom or something, a level 1. And then because Brionic already was a dragon, it can count as the non-tuner for this guy. So that's one way to do it. Um... Overall, there's too many limitations on this card. It having to hit monsters 2400 or less, and also requiring the dragon. That will limit it severely in the extra deck. Valkyrie Seagrin, level 9 fairy, 2200, 2400. If this is in your hand, you can target one face up spell or trap you control, send it to the GUI. If you do special summon this card, if this is normal or special summons, you can special summon one level 8 or lower Valkyrie monster from your hand or GUI. You can use this effect once per turn. So it seems like having a continuous spell or trap or a field spell is like a main deck building requirement. They've done it with light barrier. Um, any actually, it doesn't have to be light barrier. It's like any Valhalla works. Anyone that starts off with a field spell can do this. So you could run like peak performance. Harpy's Hunting Ground, Power of the Dark. Power of the Dark actually would be a negative because I think the Hurt Fairies, the Yami Hurts Fairies, but um, having some kind of continuous spell or field spell 
works to the advantage of this, and having that as a dual skill might be even better. But she could cheat up Brunhilde, any of the smaller monsters, or even Urda. Urda's really good as an R, so she can cheat up Urda from the deck and make everyone lose a thousand attack. Valkyrie Sexti, level 1, 0 attack, 2000 defense. When this is special summoned, special summon a Valkyrie monster from the deck except for this one. Uh, during your main phase, you can send the top 2 cards of your opponent's deck to the GY. It's like an intermediate card, so you could go like Seagrin into Shexti, into Brynhildi, or, or Urda. Um... No attack value at all, and only mills two cards from your opponent each turn, so I'm not really sure if it's useful at all. Um, if they're a very aggressive deck, it it won't really have the OTK potential because it can't attack, but it does mill cards into intermediate, like an enabler for... It's like an extender, I guess that's the best way to put it. Arcana Force EX, the Dark Ruler, level 10, Light Fairy... 4,000, 4,000, cannot be normal summoned or set, must be special summoned from your hand by sending three monsters you control to the graveyard and cannot be special summoned other ways. When this is special summoned, toss a coin, it's heads, this card can make a second attack during each battle phase, but if it does, it will change the defense. And then the, the defense mode can't be changed until the end of your next turn. Tails, if this is destroyed, destroy all cards on the field. So this is like a three tribute special summon. It's kind of like Destiny Hero Plasma. That's the best syner- uh, analogy. No one played Arcana Force EX the Light Ruler, and I don't think anyone's gonna play the Dark Ruler either. Um, you're gonna try to put this in a Master of Destiny deck, but those deck th- those decks aren't great for spamming monsters, three monsters quickly into a special summon. So this is just filler right now. Um, not much to say about it. Triamid Sphinx, level 10, rock 2500, 2500, cannot be normal summoned or set, must be special summoned by the effect of a Triamid card and cannot be special summoned other ways. If a face-up Triamid card you control except for Sphinx is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can special summon this card from your hand. While you control another Triamid card, this card gains 500 attack and defense for each field spell with a different name in your graveyard. Also, monsters... Your opponent controls cannot attack except to attack Sphinx. The Triamids were a tier 3 deck for a very long time. They're kind of like tier 4 ish right now, but they're not even there, I think. The wording on this card is a little confusing, but they must attack this guy. And he can easily become 4,000 attack with 3 of the field spells in the graveyard. So, they. I've played against this card. They, they shuffle their Triamid field spells very well. It's a pretty good card. It might put Triumphs back on the map, but when I was playing against this card, against this card, my monster was like uh, forty six or forty four hundred, and it got over this guy, and then they couldn't really do anything after that. So, um, but in most cases, four thousand can hit through your regular cutoff. I think the cutoff is probably like thirty one hundred now. Purgatrio will be like thirty something with the Alistair buff, but it will hit over most things. Uh, might bring those triumphs back to tier 4. I don't think any more than that. Nova Summoner. Level 4, Light Fairy, 1400, 800. When this is destroyed by battle and sent to the GY, you can special summon one Light Fairy with 1500 or less attack from your deck. If Sanctuary in the Sky is on the field, you can special summon Aerith Parshaf instead. Neric Battle Destruction Floater. 1500 or attack lower Light Fairies. You can also get Air Knight Parshaf, who's 1900 attack and does piercing. Uh, but that's not very useful. You're not going to run Air Knight Parshaf just to include it in Nova Summer. This is just to float out those light fairies. So, you know, any of these floater cards haven't seen any play. Mystic Tomato, Flying Karma Curie, UFO Turtle. Any of those things we've never seen in a while. Uh, Sand Ganon, which is a Black Forest, are probably more useful at this point. Could be more useful when Xyz hits though, so you can kind of float something out to the board and set up that quick Xyz play. I would say not though. Scrapyard normal spell, add one scrap tuner from your deck to your hand. Very simple tutor spell, 
any number of scrap tuners available in this game. Unfortunately, they're not like the choice you want for tuner nowadays. I think the most common one played was Scrap Goblin, but that was very early in the days of Alistair. Now they have many better options, but maybe more scrap cards come to the game and this will actually be useful. Combination attack, quick play spell. During a battle phase, you can use this effect on a monster that has attacked. This turn equipped with a union monster. Change the union monster back to a monster in face up attack defense. Attack or defense. Also, the monster that was equipped with the union monster may attack again this turn. So, union monsters are a long forgotten and generally phased out type of monster. This specifically works with union strategies, so it's not useful at all. It's kind of like to let you win the game right there with a double attack. But I don't even remember a Union monster being in the meta for the past year. So uh, very unlikely they come back just because of a quick play spell. There could be a very niche deck that just like a OTK straight up hey, true nades and uh, various buffers like ca- Concentrating Current or something like that with this for the... It kind of reminds me of um, like those backup rider decks that just blew you out. And it could have some use there. I, this could have some niche play now that I think about it. Karakuri, cash in, trap card, target one Karakuri, you control one effect monster your opponent controls, change the p- battle position of your monster, negate the effects of that opponent's monster until the end of the turn. If you control a Karakuri, you can banish this from the GY. Target one face of monster on the field. Change its battle position. You can activate one per turn. Very good card. It's very typical of card curries. Um, you position flip your monster, which would work with anatomy. But then you also do a forbidden chalice on your enemy monster, and that's the reason why you would play this card. So they play Alistair, and then you hit them with the cash in, so they don't get to get the invocation. So that's what this is to negate the enemy's effects, and you you run this to negate effects. So any it works like ultimate providence or forbidden chalice. Then you can also do something where you banish it and then change the battle position again. So you could kind of use it like a econ, but in the graveyard. So there's some additional protection. Or it can let you attack again. Uh, like a monster who's in defense can be changed to attack. And then you can attack. So this is another core piece with Kunamzan in making Card Curries a new competitive deck. Finally, if it's not obvious, the last, the main get, the main reason why you are buying this box at all is because of Karma Cut. Trap card, discard one card, target one face of monster your opponent controls, banish it, then banish all mo- all cards with the same name as that monster in your opponent's graveyard. Now it's become, it probably was the best or second best with Fiendish Chain. I'm not sure who's the 1A, who's the 1B, but these were the main uh, selection box cards to get. And now that this is available, everyone's going to run it. So as long as your deck isn't completely crippled by tossing cards. So having this will instantly replace a number of cards like probably like Floodgate, like even really good premium cards like that. So it clears out the graveyard two of those cards. So it could completely kill your opponent in one turn. Um the question is though, because this is so available. The oversaturation of Karma Cut could become too much. How long before it hits limit 3? Konami could just hit limit 3 next month and we would have like, kind of wasted our gems, or money into investing into Karma Cut. We'll see how long of a leash it gets. But just because this box released and Karma Cut is being available for all players, I did my Akiza Synchro Toolbox deck just specifically to counter a target strategy with Archfiend's Call or with Naturia Barkian to negate trap cards. So um, I've packed this card into my deck myself and it's paid huge dividends. Like like you wouldn't even imagine. Like This card's amazing. Alright, so 
that's the discussion on the mini box. Some other notable cards besides the URs and SRs. Valkyrie Erda, I've played against this card and makes everyone lose a thousand attacks. That's really bad. Um, I mean, it's bad for you because you're just going to get run down by the Valkyries while everyone is debuffed by a thousand. So against the board of Valkyries, this is a card you really want to remove from the board. The other Valkyrie monsters, Dritty, I've seen this card a lot. Um, Vierte, White. I've seen all those cards a lot. Card Card Gamma Oil is another card I've seen. This is an equip spell. You could target a card curry in the graveyard, special summon it, and equip it so you kind of resurrect it. And then um, there's this thing where they gain attack, but I don't think it's very useful. This is just another way to get a synchro summon off, I've seen. Um, so you could bring back the Kunams on as a level 5, not a tuner. And then you have your Nanishi to make a level 3. They make the Beredo. I've seen that play a lot. Um, Trick Stars. So there's two Trick Star cards. Trick Star, Lily Bell. If this is added to your hand, except by drawing it, you can special summon it. So it's kind of like a fortune fairy. You can use this effect once per turn. It can attack directly when it inflicts battle damage. You can target a Trick Star in your graveyard, add it to your hand. And then the other one is Trickstar Narcissus, level 4, 1,800. If your opponent takes effect damage, you can special summon this from your hand. You can use this effect once per turn. Each time your opponent activates a monster effect in their hand or graveyard, inflict 200 damage to them immediately. So it's interesting. We might be getting more of these with XZs, and those cards might get nerfed by the effect damage. This one does 200, but it's... 200 for every effect in the hand or graveyard, so it could add up. I think Trick Stars are this like burn direct attack. They might be the future of burn decks. We'll see. I haven't really seen the other cards. Uh, let's see. There's two more Trick Star cards Trick Star, Magical Laurel. Kind of like a win more card here. You inflict. Damage and you special summon from the hand, but it's an equipment, so it sucks. And Trickstar Bouquet is a quick play. This one's decent for like a direct attack. Trickstar Bouquet has some potential actually. But yeah, the Watts are useless. A lot of Watt cards here. Yeah. I think the Valkyries are okay. They're kind of like a tier 4 ish deck, but. I got overrun by Urda, so I felt bad. Okay. So that is it for this box. Ugg Dimidul is here with his casual deck of the week. DD Light Sworn, Double D Light Sworn, whatever. Um, the Double D archetype can beat you every so often. I've seen it enough to say that they're pretty... They can flood the board pretty well if they have their hand, or if you beat them, they they can't really come back. But Doug Dimidul has combined it with a Light Sworn package, not too big of, not too heavy on the Light Sworn package, but it's enough to do some milling and do the synchro play. So here is Doug Dimidul of a fairly competitive Double D Light Sworn deck. Hey there, this is Doug Dimadul with Doug's Casual Deck of the Week. So this week, I'm going to show you just something that's a little effective. I mean, like, very much so in the Legend rank on the PvP ladder. So, uh, you know, this this one is, is um, an interesting little twist, because I, I really like the DD archetype, or the DDD archetype, whichever ones you want to call them, but 
they just need a little something extra right now to keep things competitive. And as we've done with just about every other deck in the game right now, through the use of Charge of the Light Brigade, we're going to splash in some Light Swarms into this deck just to tweak it to a way that will make it even that much more effective. So really what I'm trying to do here is I'm going to run a DDD deck with Raiden, Hand of the Light Sworn. And that's it. That's my only Light Sworn edition. It's a Warrior Tuner, level 4, 1700 attack. You can send the top two cards your deck to your graveyard that's really the main purpose and then you can mill two more at the end of the turn but the goal is to not really have this sucker on the field uh, for very long there your trick to this deck is to get your raid in hand of the light sworn onto the field and then either get into a fusion play or get into some other kind of special summon of one of your level seven uh dd uh dd monsters or ddd monsters and uh, whether it's from the extra deck or from your deck and to get into your level 11 star eater synchro play it requires one tuner one or more non-tuner must be synchro summoned uh this card synchro summon cannot be negated and when it's summoned cards and effects cannot be activated if this card attacks it's unaffected by other card effects until the end of the damage step so this is just one of those real big beefy boss monsters you just need to run one copy of it in the extra deck now why because we want to have our ddd extra deck just kind of package going on so you have your two ddd oracle king uh dark or dark whatever the 2800 attack level seven and then you want to have your three copies of ddd uh, king beowulf there with the 3000 attack and five uh, and 2500 defense um, you know, that way you could do piercing, and then at the beginning of your turn, you can pop all cards in all the back row, and then one copy of your DDD Wave Oblivion King Caesar Ragnarok. Uh, it requires two DDD monsters. Uh, it's just got a really good effect where, you know, once per turn when an attack is declared involving this card, you can target one other DD or dark contract card you control, return it to the hand, and if you do, equip one face-up monster your opponent controls to this card except the battling monster. This card gains attack equal to the combined original attack of the monster equipped to it by this effect. So just a, you know, just a nice little screwball that you could throw in there. Now, as for the spells in this deck, because we don't run any traps, it's just two of your dark contract with the gate that allows you to search out any DD monster, your two copies of dark contract, with the Swamp King that allows you to get an extra fusion play even out of your graveyard. Two copies of Charge of the Light Brigade to start milling some cards to the graveyard and then get into your um your synchro play with that raid in hand of the light sworn. And then just for good measure, one enemy controller, just because. Uh, I like to run this skill with Restart. It allows me to open with a hand that I want, because really what I want to try and get is a Raiden so I could get into a Synchro play. But I want to at least have a DD uh, Vice Typhon in my hand. It's a level 7, 2300 attack, 2800 defense. I don't really use it for its first effect, but its second effect is great. During your main phase, if this card is in the graveyard because it was sent there this turn, doesn't matter how, you can fusion summon one level 8 or higher DDD fusion monster from your extra deck by banishing fusion materials listed on it from your graveyard, including this card. So really, this just allows you from your graveyard to just get into a free King Beowulf fusion play. That's really all you're going to be able to do with this. But it's really effective. It's really great to really load the board with uh, some strong fusion monsters. If you have the three copies of DD Swirl Slime, go for it. If you only have two copies, that's fine too. But uh, for more consistency, I'll try to run three copies of DD Swirl Slime. If you want to add an extra dark contract with the gate to allow you to search out your, your slime, go for it. Whatever, whatever floats your boat. But yeah, so you're going to have your three copies of Vice Typhon, you're going to have your three copies of Swirl Slime, and then you're going to have your three copies of DDD Dragon King Pendragon. That's the only non-fusion DDD monster we have right now. So uh, really, really good card, but you're really going to try to use it more as fusion material. And if you have a DD Swirl Slime in your graveyard, you could always banish it to special summon your Pendragon to the field, which is just a phenomenal play. So what also spices things up is uh, that one dragon that everybody's tries, trying to get out of that uh, selection box, which I'm not going to spend that kind of money on, uh, that banishes dark and light monsters from your graveyard. But instead, I'll run a copy of Chaos Sorcerer. It's level 6, 2300 attack, must first be special summoned by banishing one light and one dark monster from your graveyard. Uh, once per turn, you can target one face-up monster, banish that target. This card cannot attack 
the turn you activate that effect. So why is this now effective in a DD deck? Well, because you're going to be running Raid in Hand of the Light Sworn, and really to go into a fusion play, or sorry, not a fusion play, a synchro play, so that it's going to be sitting in your graveyard anyway. So this is just basically a free special summon, having Chaos Sorcerer on the field. Uh, so that, that's why, I mean, the deck is, you could really load the board on your first, second, third turn. This is a very explosive deck, one that you could really try to shut down your opponent, especially when you get Beowulf onto the field, and you're able to get Star Eater on the field because your your opponent may have some funny effects or something they're going to try to pull on you, uh, maybe a drowning mirror force or something if they set it on their first turn, but it's not going to affect your star eater. So uh, this could really do some damage real quickly to your opponent, and it's um, uh, it's the cause for a lot of rage quits right now when I'm playing on the ladder, and uh, you know I'm just kind of I, I wish I could say I was getting really into PvP this season, but um, yeah, I played a few in uh, you know got past platinum got into legend and in legend right now it's um man it's just holding its own and it's really causing a lot of rage quits in the legend rank i would expect more rage quits in platinum or in gold but uh when you're sitting in legend and people see your first turn board where you're just loading it up with a ton of boss monsters um yeah nobody's got time for that so they're just gonna rage quit in a lot of cases so uh yeah real fun deck um real competitive this isn't really a casual deck like the theme of this segment is but uh it's one worth trying so to give you the final rundown two copies of chaos sorcerer three copies of dd swirl slime two copies of raiden hand of the light sworn three copies of your dd vice typhon your three copies of DDD Dragon King Pendragon, uh, two copies of Dark Contract with the Gate, and then two copies of Dark Contract with the Swamp King, two copies of Charge of the Light Brigade, and one enemy controller, or maybe if you want to use Hey Truinate or something to uh, really focus more on back row, it's up to you. But uh, because you got Beowulf, I'm not as concerned about back row with this deck because at least I could pop it at the beginning of my turn. So uh, that's really why Beowulf is such an effective DDD monster and uh, one of the more underrated boss monsters we have in the game right now so uh yeah that's it i mean dvds are um are competitive still i'm i'm all about it uh i like it a lot and there's still a lot of support that uh, hasn't come out yet uh and i'm hoping that in future main boxes and mini boxes we get some more of that support but for now why not splash in light swarms it makes all the difference so uh, anyway that's it for my casual deck of the week i will see you next time take care All right, thanks, Doug. Check out Doug's Casual Deck of the Week. Every week on this podcast, check out his Twitter page at Yu-Gi-Oh! Deck Talk. There's some leftover things I didn't discuss this week. Rank Duels update. There's two new cards there. Igami's Rank Up cards and Igami's Duel skills. I want to discuss them, but I, I've i been sneezing all day, so I'm going to cut this. Um, hasn't been much of a day. It's only 10 o'clock in the morning, but... I'll save it for next week because there should be fewer things to talk about and there will be time. So I'm going to give Igami my time rather than uh, going through the sneezing and stuff. So upcoming news, new season of the KC Cup September 8th. So that begins in the middle of next week. New season, so the KCGT just wrapped up. And even this last season didn't count. Right, so they're going to get recycled into the new season. So it's going to be like two years worth of Kyber Cups. Mid September, Tour Guide Mission Bingo, SR Carbon Nedin. Mid September, Fight for the Fortune Cup, new Psychic Snail, new Akiza skill. Mid September, Dual Quest, and late September, Xyz World. Xexel World, whatever. So that is it for the podcast. Thank you for listening. Sorry it's a short episode because I am sneezing. I would have tacked on Igami, but sneezing. Search the dual assessment, find this podcast anywhere, uh, Twitter, interact with me on Twitter if I'm on dual underscore assessment. All these notes will be on the dualassessment.wordpress.com. All right, thanks for listening. See you later.